outside of the industry. So does, like, Ed Sheeran doesn't count, like, my musician friends don't count, or is it? Uh, no, only if they weren't involved in the process. People oh, okay. who weren't involved in the process. Yeah, I'm, Ed is one of the first people that I play it for, mm -hmm. and um, Lord, my friend Ella, yep. is oh, yeah. another person who I really, I, I respect their opinions, and so when they have a favorite song, it's kind of like, I pay attention to that. Is it, what did they suggest from the album? What was their favorite songs from the album? Ed has a song that he's obsessed with called Bad Blood, and um, Ella likes a song called Welcome to New York. Okay. And the song, yeah, yeah, that's her favorite, I think. That's, that's good, awesome. and obviously that must make you feel pretty good then? Yeah, it's awesome, because um, both of them are such amazing songwriters, so when, when they kind of raise their hand and go, that one, that one, that one, it's, it's a cool moment. Do you know, I've got to say, we like, you know how you play, like, games with your friends, like, celebrity who you date or whatever? We've got this thing where if you had to send a human being to meet the aliens, like, who would represent the human race the best as women? And you always come up as what? the perfect human. I know. Because no. it, it, there's everything about you, because you look like a supermodel. You what? see, And then there's no one that says a bad word about you. Um, can you tell me something just to make me feel better about myself? Like, do you eat in bed or do what you do something? What are you something? talking about? You are so gorgeous. It's it's hard to talk to you. Oh. Don't even do that. Oh. I love that. That's no, so crazy. Serious. You no, have the cheekbones. You a, have the cheekbones. Yeah. I don't have the cheekbones. Yeah, but I'm an edgy mess. Like, I'm all over the place. <laughs> but the difference is you've got such a clean image. But do you do anything weird? Like, anything, like, that you go, how embarrassing? Like, I think it's well-documented people finding flaws. Such a clean <laughs> image. But do you do anything weird? Like, anything, like... That you go, how embarrassing. Like, I think it's well-documented people finding flaws with me. I don't think that that's a problem for anyone. Really? Um, but, yeah, I mean, I'd all, pretty much all I do when I'm not doing interviews or shows is watch TV. So there you go. Wow. That's Does that edgy. help you? I mean, that was pretty wild. I mean, admit, yeah. You wanted something wild? Yeah, like something crazy that I go, oh, she's not perfect. I think the fact that I'm sort of a shut-in and just watch TV by myself with my cats all the time is a little bit, like, of a flaw to give you. Oh, Are you going to become cute. a crazy cat lady? You know, like, one day <laughs> no, when you... No, I'm going to keep it cute. Right, okay. You keep many... it to two. I have okay. two. Is that the threshold with, with cats? For like, how many me, cats for before me you it go? is. I already feel as if I'm surrounded by cats yep. when I have them. They're just... There's one there. There's one there. Yep. It's like, oh, you're ev they're everywhere. Yep. So if I had one more, it would be sort of like like a herd, yeah, like I reckon, a pack. I reckon four's the number. If you have if you have four, then you've gone into crazy cat lady yeah. town. Unless you're rescuing them and fostering them. And oh, like, don't make me feel bad. Do you know bad. what I'm saying? You just don't need to make me feel bad about that. I mean, <laughs> then, then there's the loophole. There's yeah. the one, like, that's the exception. Yeah. Is it the same with children? Probably. No, no, no. Have as many kids Okay. As as you want. Yeah. Um, so if he says that you're the perfect human, is there a skill that you don't have but you would like to have? Yes. I wish I could speak French and Spanish, and I can't. But you can learn that, though. But I, but I haven't. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point. <laughs> we're, we're almost 25 years in, you guys, and, and yeah. brain development is it's, not speeding up. It's not going to happen? Yeah. I mean, I, I, could, I could very well do it, but if you were asking me what, if I could push a button and be able to do something really well, it would yeah. be like fluent French, fluent Spanish. Um, I don't understand how you're so worldly at how young you are. Like, your songwriting is so... Um, on point. Thank you. Is, and I know people say that you write about ex-boyfriends and stuff like that, but what else are you meant to write about? The thing is, it's so public, isn't it? You dating. So if it's not love, it's about nightclubs. But how do you feel when people say that you write about boyfriends? Um, it's interesting because I think as a songwriter, you have your fans who have been keeping up with your music since before you were known. You yeah. know, my first album came out when I was 16. So I would write about my life as I saw it, as I felt it. And then what happens is as you get more successful, which you're lucky if that happens, yeah. you have more and more people paying attention to what you're doing. And you've been doing it the same way your entire career as a songwriter but all of a sudden the perspective has changed yep. and they use kind of you writing songs about your life as a way to play detective and for me I have a, a really strict 
personal policy that I never name names. Yeah. And so anybody saying that a song is about a specific person is purely speculating. Yeah, right. Um, and they're going to do that, but it, the most important thing for me is maintaining artistic integrity, which means as a songwriter, I still continue to write about my life. Yeah. I could very well water it down, and I could just say, like, you know, the sky is blue, and now we're dancing, and it's we're Rhymes. in a club, and it's great. But and uh, I just don't think that... I love that, that song. <laughs> it's a, I know, I know it was a number one hit, one. but <laughs> no, but people can, they can sense honesty. You can tell in your music. You could, you know, you can hear. You're it. gonna have people who are going to see the depth from which you approached a song. The fact yeah. that you put, you know, emo- your real emotions into it, and that that's valuable, and that's good, and that's real. Yeah. And then you're gonna have people who are gonna say. Oh, you know, like she just writes songs about her ex-boyfriends, and I think, frankly, that's a very sexist angle to take. No one says that about Ed Sheeran. No yeah, one says right. it about Bruno Mars. They're all writing songs about their exes, their current girlfriends, their love life, and no one raises a red flag there. It's yeah. true. Is there a, uh, is there a theme with this album then? With the new album. Yeah, I like to have lots of different themes. Yeah. I approach it from uh, sort of an angle where. I'm making an album for two years, so I like for there to be visual themes. For this one, there are a lot of Polaroids. You see a lot of neon lights. You see a lot of pastel colors. Um, I think emotionally it comes from a place of much more independence and freedom. It's about me moving to New York and kind of living my life on my own terms. Um, I think lyrically it's still a very it's storytelling based, but the production is kind of... Uh, it's, it drew a lot of inspiration from the late 80s synth pop era and mm-hmm. I think a lot of really cool things were happening in culture and in music at that point yep. so it was, it's been it's been such a joy to make this album it's my first pop album everything yep. I've done before we've called country yep. even though I've always really played with a lot of pop sensibility yep. but this is the first time I've been like I'm making a pop album yeah good on you um, do you it, we, oh, Selena Gomez, she's, is she really your best friend or is it like one of those celebrity where they... Oh, no, she's definitely she one is? of my best friends, yeah. And you wanted to move to New York, do I you? do. I want her to be close to me. <laughs> do you feel protective of her? Because I feel like you're so strong and know who you are and um, good with all the media. Do you feel protective of her? How yeah, you help her absolutely. That? Um, I think that one thing about learning to be the best friend you can possibly be is knowing when you have to let people figure things out on their own. Yeah. And, um, and I, I do trust her. I think she has good judgment. I think that she's going to do amazing things with her life. She's incredibly intelligent. Right. People, it would scare them if they knew how smart she is. Um, so I think one thing you just have to do as a friend is just be there for, for your friends no matter what they're going through yeah. and never try to boss them around. I think that's the worst thing you can do. But how lovely you've got each other and you're in the same industry and under the same pressures. That must be amazing. Yeah, it's fun when we friend. go back and reminisce and tell old stories because now she's 22 and I'm 24. Gosh, we met when we were, <laughs> we were 15 and 17 yeah. when we met. So it's right. like, it's wild how many phases both of us have gone through. Yeah, but... Taylor, can I uh, ask you a question about your knowledge of Australia? Because Australia is quite known for its deadly animals, right? Um, Yeah. I want to give you a list of Australian animals, and I want you to tell me which one of these Australian animals is the least dangerous to handle, all right? Now, they sound innocuous, but I assure you there is some uh, jeopardy to them. Okay, first one, a blue ring octopus. Second one, a funnel web spider. Third one, a death adder. And the fourth one, an Altian child. Which one of those is the... The second, the second one, the spider. Funnel web spider. I hate spiders. Is that right? Most deadly spider on the planet. Really? Yeah, they live here in Sydney and they kill you. There's no, there's no anecdote. You're, you're, you're just gone. There's no anecdote. Oh god. Yeah. Oh god. Why? Oh god. And I've got one in my pocket for you now. Oh no. <laughs> I'm only what I do have. To I, I have amongst my other phobias is arachnophobia. So. Oh really? Yes. It's a. It's a. It, yeah. So that's... Well, I, I, that's not what I'm going to give you. Yeah. I know that recently you had a... Uh, uh, no, it's a Becky uh, moment with a T-shirt, right? Oh, my God. Tomorrow, Are you on Tumblr? Do you know of our inside yeah, I know, joke? I know all about it. I'm, I'm <laughs> right across it. 
But uh, tomorrow in Hyde Park, your fans are having a uh, Swiftnik. Oh, my God. Which is a picnic for Taylor uh, Swift fans. That's Did amazing. You know? And so yeah. they asked us to give you a T-shirt that clearly doesn't fit and you will never wear. <laughs> but I would like to give it to you anyway. Thank you. might wear it when you genius. wear fake tan or something. It's genius. So there you <laughs> no, go. it's Swiftnik. Amazing. Taylor, thank you very much for your Thanks time. Thanks so much. Thanks for talking to me, guys. Enjoy the rest of your time, Australia, and don't touch any Elton Childs. Thank you for the, my new education on deadly spiders. It deadly. really helps with my anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> Hey. <laughs> Hi. Come in. Thank you so much for fitting a 73-question interview into your busy schedule. Oh, it's all good. All right, cool. Let's do this. So what's keeping you busy these days? Uh, I'm just working out and getting ready for Grammys. What's the most exciting thing in life right now? Grammys? What are you completely bored of in life right now? Clickbait. What is something that recently moved you? The movie The Martian. Okay, uh, what do you have going on over here? This is a room where I write a lot of songs. Nice piano. How many guitars do you own? I lost track of that in probably 2007. What's the first song you learned to play on the guitar? Um, Kiss Me by Sixpence and I'm the Richer. What's the first thing you do when you get an idea for a song? I record a voice memo of myself singing it or I write it down in my notes. What's your songwriting process? Um, lots of preparation. I write a lot of my ideas down before I get into the actual session. What song took you the least amount of time to write? Blank Space because I'd written a lot of the lines down already in the year preceding the session. Which one took you the longest? All too well, because I I, it's a really emotional song. I kept putting it down for months on end. So is this the room where you keep all of your awards? Um, no, they're kind of everywhere. Do you want to see the rest of the house? Yes. Amazing. All right, let's do it. Who is your favorite teacher? Uh, my guitar player, Paul Sidoti, teaches me a lot on the road about piano and guitar. If you could teach one subject in school, what would it be? English. Okay, see your Scrabble player. Yeah, there's a word you might know. Check it out. Uh, yep, something tells me that's planned. Nope, that was spontaneous. I'm a very spontaneous person. What's your favorite beverage? Coffee. Would you like some? Let's see what you got. I have espresso. I have regular coffee. I have different flavors. <laughs> I have a, a VMA here. <laughs> you can't really take that, I don't think. But You definitely can't drink it. No, you could stir with it, though. Actually, I'll have a water. Okay. Thank you very much. What's your favorite cocktail? Uh, vodka Diet Coke. What's your favorite food? I mean, if we're just saying, like, what I wish I could eat every day, if calories didn't count as, like, chicken tenders. What would you order at a drive-thru? Um, cheeseburger, fries, chocolate shake. What was the best birthday cake you've ever had? It was from Milk Bar. It was for my 25th birthday, and it was so good that even Jay-Z raved about it. Oh, thank you very much. What was the last thing you baked? Um, a gluten-free, dairy-free chocolate cake. What one thing do you need to have in your fridge at any given time? Hummus, weirdly. What's one thing you still have from your childhood? My insecurities. <laughs> do you want to go outside and check out the other situation? Let's check out the other situation. What's your favorite TV show of all time? Friends. Favorite TV show that's currently on the air? Dateline. <laughs> what is your favorite movie? Love, actually. What was a movie that made you cry your eyes out? Oh my god, The Martian. Why do you think you're the most followed person on Instagram? Because my cats are adorable. So, have you ever Googled yourself? Yeah. Taylor, what do you think when you Google yourself? I think you should never Google yourself again. <laughs> if you had a superpower, what would it be? Healing people. If you were not a singer, what would you be doing? Might be in advertising. Maybe, like, coming up with slogans and concepts is the same as as hooks and songs well this is very lovely out here thank you uh can you show me a really cool or bizarre talent okay i'm well aware that this is not a talent but this is like the only thing that i can do i have um double jointed elbows so no. oh man yeah they're weird they're a little bit weird yeah. what, what's something you can't do i can't do a cartwheel or a handstand what's the best compliment you've ever received that I'm generous. What is the best gift you've ever received? My boyfriend planted a, um, an olive tree in my yard for Christmas. What's one habit you wish you could break? Well, when I'm sitting there, usually I, ju I just do this with my leg, like, and people think that I'm nervous, and then they get nervous, and then everybody's nervous. <laughs> do you have any <laughs> nicknames? 
Yeah, my brother calls me Taffy. What surprises you most about people? I'm pleasantly surprised by the fact that I tell my friends absolutely everything and it never ends up getting out. What makes you laugh no matter what? Kevin Hart. What does creativity mean to you? Um, creativity is getting inspiration and having that lightning bolt idea moment and then having the hard work ethic to sit down at the desk and write it down. So I found out Nicole Kidman swam with sharks. What's the most adventurous thing you've done? Like watching Shark Week. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite lyrics of all time? Um, I had some dreams. They were clouds in my coffee from You're So Vain by Carly Simon. What's one song you wish you had written? The Friends theme song because of those royalties. What's a great fan moment that comes to mind? Um, I'll be driving down the street and I'll see a kid walking down the street with my shirt on for my tour and I'll just stop my car and be like, hey, nice shirt. <laughs> Most memorable career moment so far. Um, I think filming the Bad Blood video was my favorite memory. What's one accomplishment you're most proud of? My Grammys. What's something you've always wanted to try, but you've been too scared to do? Oh, Coachella. What's your spirit animal? A dolphin, because they're very social. They travel in groups. Hey, Taylor. Oh, hey. Hey, my wife and I's anniversary is coming up. Where should I take her? Um, congratulations, and you should take her to Big Sur. You're welcome. It's freezing outside. Yeah, it is. All right, what advice would you give to anyone who wants to become a singer? Um, get a good lawyer. Any pre-show rituals? Yeah, I stretch, I warm up my voice, and then my band and dancers and I get in a huddle, and it's just good vibes. What's the most difficult song to perform on stage, and why? There's a song I wrote called The Best Day that is about my mom, and it's just hard to sing because it makes me really emotional. So this is a really great room you have. Thank and you. And you have a lot of cats. Yeah. How many cats are in this room? Um, probably more than ten, and I don't know if you're counting the one that's alive down there. What? There's a cat there. I see the cat. All right, here's one for you. If you were a cat, would you get along with your cats? Probably not. They would probably not think that I'm cool. How many cat breeds can you name in ten seconds? Um, when do we start? Go. British short hair, Scottish fold, Himalayan, exotic short hair, exotic long hair, uh, sphinx cat, munchkin, uh, Siamese, um, um, the, the... Time's up. <sighs> Amazing. What's the coolest thing in this room? I can do so much better than that. The coolest thing in this room, I think, is the fireplace. Nice. If you could raid one woman's closet, who would it be? Blake Lively. What's your favorite fashion trend of all time? High-waisted stuff. Besides your phone and wallet, what's a couple must-have purse items? I have this lavender antibacterial hand spray that I have, and whenever me and my friends are in a public bathroom, and we have to wait in line at the sink to wash our hands, I'm like, no, like, check it out. And everybody's like, thanks, girl. Can you tell me what you'll be wearing to this year's Met Gala? I'm going to be dressed as a robot, um, and I'm going to carry a sword. Okay, so my little cousin Julia wants to know, what did you want to do with your life at age five? Um, when I was five, I knew that my dad was a stockbroker, but I did not know what a stockbroker was. Yet I walked around telling people I'm going to be a stockbroker when I grow up. What's the one thing you wish you knew at 19? If I could talk to my 19-year-old self, I'd just say, hey, you know, you're going you're gonna to date just like a normal 20-something should be allowed to, but you're going to be a national lightning rod for slut-shaming. What's something you will not be doing in 10 years? Um, something I will not be doing in 10 years. I'll be 36. I really hope that I'm not stressed about the idea of approaching 40. I hope that aging is not something that really freaks me out. What do you think is the most important life lesson for someone to learn? That karma's real. Okay, what can you say in another language? I can count to 10 in German. Do it. Eins, zwei, drei, vier, fünf, sechs, sieben, acht, neun, zehn. Go Taylor. Thank you. Okay, hate to break it to you, but the interview is coming to an end. Okay, well, I'll walk you to the door. Okay. What did you love most about the town where you grew up in? I grew up in Wyoming, Pennsylvania, and I liked the fact that it had a lot of historic buildings. What's the bravest thing you've ever done? Writing the Apple Music Letter. Most spontaneous thing you've ever done? Writing the Apple Music Letter. What's one goal you're determined to achieve in your lifetime? I really want an honorary doctorate degree because Ed Sheeran has one, and I feel like he looks down on me now because I don't have one. All right, Taylor, we did it. Now it is time 
for the final question. I'm going to take you over here first and let you out. Okay, great. Uh, what is your favorite scented candle? Byredo Treehouse. That is it. Oh, my God, that's amazing. <laughs> Thanks. I'm go buy it right now. Bye. Thanks, Taylor. <laughs> See you later. Everywhere. The record was skipping in my brain. Hi, Anna. It's Taylor. I have some questions for you. Things I've been dying to know. I think the internet will agree with me. Question number one. What would be the nicest adjective that you could possibly use to complement a person, thing, concept? What would you use if you're like, oh, that person's heavenly? Like, take heavenly and just like, what, what would you say? A generous spirit. On the flip side, what is the most insulting adjective you could use to describe a person, thing, concept? Disrespectful. You want to mention well since i'm late for you guys i don't feel like i can say that today my next question is and you have to be really honest about this how did you really feel when i copied your hairstyle at the 2016 grammys taylor i am being very very honest and i would like to tell you that i was on it where would you rather live forever a lighthouse or a houseboat definitely a lighthouse i like to be on firm ground what trend do you wish never existed uh, from the last couple of years? Well, I was just recently in Paris for the couture shows, and I definitely saw far too many neon leopard print leggings, something I would definitely not want to see again. So I heard that you love musicals, which as if I couldn't love you more. I was curious to know if you could be one character in Cats on Broadway. <laughs> What character would you choose? Say Bomble Arena, because that's the one I play in the movie. Taylor, you have to forgive me, but because I'm such a theater nerd, I think I would have to choose the character played by Ian McKellen, which is Gus, the theater cat. Sorry. If you had to adopt another dog today, someone just hands you a puppy, you're like, this puppy's great. What would you name this new puppy? Taylor, I'm so glad that you asked me that question because actually we just have a new puppy in our household. She arrived uh, this week and her name is, is Finch. Here she is. And she's called Finch because we call all of our dogs after characters in To Kill a Mockingbird. So we have had a Scout, a Radley and a Harper. And let me tell you, they are not happy about Finch's arrival. All right, Anna, if you were to have a dinner party, what would be the background music you would play? Like, sometimes I'll go for, like, 60s big band pop songs, or sometimes it's Dean Martin. What's your go-to dinner party playlist? Taylor, I like to start the evening off with conversation, and then when we move on to a more informal part of the evening and into music, and maybe this will cause you to forgive me for my answer to the uh, cat's question, I definitely would choose Fearless, maybe Red, and then of course, Lover. Anna, thank you so much for answering my questions. They've been keeping me awake for years. You have no idea what a weight has lifted off of my life. And also, you know, thanks for the September issue cover of Vogue. Really appreciate it. Bye! <laughs> Okay, so when did you get back into town? I got back into town yesterday, and you sent me no, the no, most no, no, amazing no, 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 gift. No, 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 don't talk. I don't want you to talk about it. Why? It's not to be talked about. Okay. It's not. It was. It's not. I thought for, it was a. I thought. No, it, I didn't know no, it was a no, secret it's gift. It's not. It's something to be talked God, about. So okay. let's act like we never talked about that. Okay. So Taylor's back in town. What's happening, Taylor? Hey, I'm. I'm back in town. I just got back from London. It was a very long flight. So you did the uh, X Factor over there. Yeah, I was doing X Factor and um, got to sing a song that I wrote with Gary Lightbody from Snow Patrol, and that was a blast. And then did like this appearance on an award show that was fun, and now I'm back. So you're getting the Pinnacle Award? Yes. That's awesome. That means you're like the biggest 
and nicest person ever, right? Thank you. Isn't I don't, that what, isn't is that what that, that means? I think that's the exact description definition. on the trophy, biggest and nicest person ever. I hope that it says that engraved somewhere so that I can just put that right in my kitchen and be like, hey, welcome to my house, because that's what that I'm says. I'm the biggest and nicest person ever, yes. Well, I mean, I'm just, I'm so honored. It's amazing, because it's the second time it's been given out since it was, like, I guess, created. And um, I'm, I'm just very honored. I'm very thankful that the CMA would consider me for something like that. Can I tell you a story about the cookies you gave me? Is I it got a, really sick? You're lying. I swear to you. That's I such a lie. I swear don't to you. Lie. No, no, no. I, don't I don't know lie if it was on the that. radio. I swear. I don't know if it was. Don't I, it lie probably on wasn't the, radio. the cookies. It probably no, wasn't. it wasn't. Don't lie. But I swear to you, I got really like food poisoning that day. No. So it was either that. No. I have put it Stop. down to like three. I, I'm not Take lying. Take it back. I'm not saying it was the cookies, but I'm saying there was a chance. Are you allergic to awesomeness? Mm. Is that I what happened? Be. Is that why I'm itching right now? Yes. Because right now I'm itching. Yeah. Okay. Taylor did the peace sign in a picture, and I was like, that's I don't that's know weird. why. No, yeah. somebody came up, and they had a camera, and I just, like, made a really serious face and gave a peace sign, and I've never done that before. I also thought it was a little weird, but we have the picture as no, proof. No, it was so weird. It was such a dorky thing to do. Um, change the subject. Okay, well... Uh, are you ever coming back on the show after our first? Yes, definitely. It was a legendary first appearance for both really? of us because rarely do guests zing me because I usually control everything, and secondly, oh. rarely do you get zung. Yes, this is true. Right, so that's what I'm saying. It's so true. we're just two meteors. Right, that, flying through the air. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, you got to go, but it's good to see you again. Yeah, great to see you too. And uh, don't mention what we talked about. Okay. It's a secret. It's so weird. I like to have a life outside of just. So weird. <laughs> All right, we're done. You can wrap it right now with Taylor. We're out of here. You're a weirdo with your privacy issues. Chatting about um, sitting on your trampoline and writing songs. That is, must be an amazing <laughs> thing, just hang out with Ed. It was say, a funny day. What? Tell me about the day. What did you do? Did you plan to get together and write music or well, we, what just happened? We wrote several times, and the first time that we wrote, we sat in a hotel room in, I think, like Arizona. We've got another surprise for you. Weeper has... Pre Arizona. And we just mm. kind of, like, wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote and just, like, laughed and had the best time and became really close friends and then decided to write again, like, a couple weeks later at my house in L.A. And that's when we decide like I, he comes over and we're talking and we start writing and I was like do you want to see my trampoline I just got one <laughs> <laughs> Christmas has like, come early do you want to see my tramp uh, yeah <laughs> Grab your guitar. Like, I'm five years old all of a sudden like, you want to see my trampoline he's like yes come on, have a look it's the best the biggest and the best one <laughs> and so we go to my backyard where I had this like the, the previous owners of the house put in, like, a, a really mature, like, tennis court. Mm. And I buy the house, and I'm like, put a trampoline right in the middle of it. <laughs> so we're on a tennis court with a trampoline on top of it. And I, I guess, like, I sh like, we were bouncing on the trampoline. Mm. And yeah. I hadn't put the guitar down because I was so excited about showing him the trampoline. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Still had it in my hand. And I... Start, and I was like, by the way, do you like this pre-chorus? I just want to know, you better know. And then we just started, like, writing the song that ended up being you on the record. Me. Amazing stuff. It was stuff. so much fun. You guys, he's the most fun guy. Isn't you he amazing? Talk to him. He's hilarious. He was, we, he's actually joining us for a Christmas show on Christmas Day. Uh, but we were talking to him, you know, uh, during the week, and he was saying how because he's in a position, and like you would be also, you get sent so much free stuff. He was saying Christmas presents are so easy. I just hand on the free gear that gets sent <laughs> exactly. in. Do your oh parents expect a lot too? Do they go, you know, come on, you've had a good year, darling. Now what's in store for us? No, my parents are being impossible this year because I keep sending my, tech, my brother text messages like, what do you want for Christmas? Mm. What do you want for Christmas? Mm. What do you want for Christmas? Do you want another copy of Red? <laughs> you, you can send him the album he, and again. He, he wouldn't write me back. And so I finally, like, in all caps, like, psychotically asked yeah. him, tell me what you want for Christmas. And he wrote back um, he wrote back the YouTube link to that movie, the scene from that movie where the girl's like, I'll never tell. Oh, and I was oh, just like... Out of a scary is that the ring? The yeah, ring, I was just like... Is it the... I was like, you're being impossible. <laughs> He's not going to tell me what he wants for Christmas. And my... Um, Give him a trampoline. I'm going to give him. I'm going to give him my used trampoline. Trampoline. <laughs> and uh, my dad is always like, I could really use some socks. Yeah. Okay. And All right. My, I see. Yeah. That's I easy, see. isn't it? My Me? mom's like, you know, I want it. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to do that, darling. You don't have to get presents this year. No,